Hi, I'm Josh. I'm at Vacuums RS in Arvada, Colorado. I'm going to be talking to you about the SIBO D4 canister today. SIBO is uh, better known as the other German vacuum cleaner. Miele has a lot of brand presence because of some of their strategic placement of their lower end models in Bed Bath & Beyond um, and some pretty aggressive Amazon sales tactics. SIBO is another uh, German vacuum cleaner manufacturer um, and I'm going to be showing you the D4. It, uh, compares and competes uh, directly against Mila's Brilliant canister, which is another model uh, that we do stock in store. Uh, these, uh, in my opinion, can in, in sometimes be a better value overall uh, for a number of reasons, which I'll go over as I, I start to show you some of the different features of the machine. So to begin with, uh, this has a 40-foot cord reel, which I believe, and I may be mistaken, but I believe at this time, this has the longest cord reel of any real vacuum cleaner. So realistically, you can probably plug this in in one place in your house and vacuum your entire house. So canister vacuums, uh, there's different various ways that they maneuver, right? Uh, based on a couple of different factors. So with this vacuum, this is a full-size canister vacuum, a little bit on the large side. So what they did with this is they make it so that the hose right here rotates. So the idea being that in an average size room, you can sort of center the vacuum cleaner and you can move all the way around the vacuum. You don't necessarily have to drag the vacuum right next to you, which is super helpful with these full-size canisters. They have four independent rotating wheels that are spaced quite a ways away from each other. Sort of like a vehicle in the snow. That helps with maneuverability. This vacuum can't tip over, no matter how hard you try. You're not gonna tip it over because of how far apart the wheels are. So one thing it's unique to SIBO and this series of power heads that they have, this is the ET1. The ET2 is similar, but a little bit wider. They have, in my experience, the best edge cleaning of any vacuum, period. I'm gonna use some rice. And I'm gonna put some rice down against the edge here. Rice is one of the hardest things to pick up when edge cleaning because compared to other demo materials we might use, like cereal or, or something along those lines, rice is quite heavy. So I'll compare this against a um, a Dyson stick back. These are certainly popular machines because of forgetting the word I'm looking for. So typically what somebody would do is then they take this off and they go through there and they, they suck everything else up. Notice how quiet these are. So your edge cleaning is the very best on the long side. And you can hear it. I don't need to tell you what's happening. You can hear it. And I'd like to point out That stuff was ground in to that edge already by the Dyson, so that was the hardest stuff to pick up. Um, they do very well on pet hair as well. I'm going to put down some, it's called KPOC, it's a material used in the vacuum industry to mimic pet hair. It's hypoallergenic, that's part of the reason we use it, a lot of people have allergies. Um, and that's why they're in a vacuum store, to look at something that's a higher filtration vacuum than what they currently have. Um, and this is great because the other reason people are in vacuum stores is because they have a problem with pet hair. Sticky and hard to pick up. So again, I'll compare this with the Dyson DC33 upright in this case. This is a discontinued model of Dyson at the time of this filming. However, they overproduced it and they're still selling it at Walmart. I believe the price of this machine is now down to 280 bucks or something. They're trying to get rid of them. But this was 
I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this series of Dysons, the DC 33, 14, and 07, were the most sold combined. They were the most sold Dyson upright vacuum. So this is great to compare to because a lot of people have seen these performing in a home, and it kind of gives you a, a benchmark. So two swipes there. Pull out the SIBO. And two swipes there. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, are, are you ready? I guess you're already. Yeah, I'm right. ready. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so obviously the SIBO performed better. I think we all knew that was going to happen. Um, a couple of features. So SIBO, SIBO has a uh, has a commercial background. They also own Karcher Windsor Sensor, which are those ugly gray vacuum cleaners that you're always going to see in uh, in hospitals because they have hospital grade filtration. Um, the White House, interestingly, uh, last I knew was using them. A lot of hotels are using their machines. So the real background is in commercial use and a big priority. Uh, commercially commercial equipment is that it needs to be very difficult to break to begin with because the individuals using commercial equipment um, they might be in a hurry they might not really care about the equipment and it also needs to be very easy to fix when something does go wrong and you see a lot of their background in the commercial world spill over into their residential product line uh, they use the term fam industrial and, and they're really aware that your teenagers are probably as hard on your vacuum cleaners as uh, you know, maybe somebody cleaning a hotel room and it's the 57th room they've had to clean and they're not having a good day, right? So a few things, uh, this is unique, to my knowledge at this time, it's unique to SIBO canisters. Um, the D4, there's a couple of their other higher end machines also, they have what they call a no clog hose. So if you look closely, you see that the top of the hose is a, a regular size hose. And as we go down the hose, you'll see that the hose gets wider as you get to the base of it. So the concept here is any vacuum cleaner is capable of clogging if you suck up something that you shouldn't suck up. The idea is to control where the clogs happen so that you can easily remove them and get on with your day. So to, to show you, you should not vacuum paper towels. <clears throat> but if you do, you will see that up here at the narrow end, the paper towel will stick, have the wider opening, the paper towel can go right in. So the concept being here, and this works very well actually, that if you pull up something you shouldn't, it's going to stop up here at the nozzle when you're using the tools, or maybe it'll stick up here where it's easy for you to access. When you're using the power head, you would more likely, if you were to suck up something you're not supposed to, get a clog at the base of the vacuum cleaner. So down here. And right here, no screwdriver or anything, that opens right up. And were you to get a clog, you could pull it right out of there. One of the things I like about all of the SIBOs for houses that have a lot of uh, people with long hair, or if you have pets that have longer hair, as I'm sure you've seen with most vacuum cleaners, you're gonna have the tendency to wrap hair around the brush roller over time. Um, with these, the brush roller pops out easily and you can clean it off very easily. You can even have a spare brush roll to just pop in there, um, you know, if you're in a hurry. The other thing about these is that instead of having an exposed rubber belt, they have a gear drive system. Um, this gear plugs right into the inside of the brush roller and it protects the, um, the gear chamber from getting hair inside of it and potentially melting down and failing. They use the same basic design of brush roll area for most of their vacuum cleaners uh, that they got from their commercial equipment, which is great because this is the part of the vacuum cleaner that really takes the highest impact. And it's also one of the most critical areas when we look at the performance of a vacuum, uh, how, they're, how they're designed, how they're gonna actually function. Uh, on canister vacuums, the hose itself is a potential uh, failure point because there's electrical wires inside of the hose that feed all the way down to the electric motor that's in the head. They did a really good job with these. They do not crimp. If you bend them like this, they just pop right back out. I don't know if you've seen some of the older Kenmores and stuff like that, which were very popular canisters at one point, uh, where they're maybe say 10 years old or so, and the hose has big old kinks in them. 
Siebel's big thing is longevity and, and resilience. So contrasting, I started at the beginning of this video, I started talking about uh, this as a potential alternative to the Mila Brilliant, which is another brand that we sell. The Mila makes fantastic products, and they're, they're real innovators. They come out with a lot of, of new products and new concepts. Uh, I, I like the brand, generally speaking, but they're also very expensive to maintain. Their filters and their high filtration bags per cubic inch of storage space in those high filtration bags are some of the most expensive supplies that we have. The repair parts are also incredibly expensive. So typically, say a brush roller for a Mila would generally run somewhere around $70 to $110. And that is a part that you're eventually gonna have to replace because the brushes wear out. All these high-end vacuums that we're talking about, the brushes will wear out long before the vacuum does. So that's a maintenance piece. The brush rollers for these, I believe last I checked, are about $24. So there's a big difference there. The other difference, and a lot of people call this the bucket vacuum, the high filtration bag is a one and a half gallon bag. It's, I believe, um, something like 30% larger than the Mila bags and, and most other canister bags uh, as well. Um, Ricar bags, I believe, are three and a half or four quarts. So this is larger even than those. An eight pack of these high filtration bags is only 30 bucks. Uh, at the time of this recording, a uh, four? four pack, five pack of meal bags is almost $20. So the bags are, are actually less than half the price. Beyond that, this is a great product, right? So you're gonna wanna maintain it. Things happen, stuff fails eventually, right? And say 20 years from now, if you wanna do a repair, maybe for a cord reel or who knows, maybe your power head motor fails or something like that, the parts are much more reasonably priced um, than, than what we see with, with Mila products. So that's definitely a consideration. As far as filtration, I actually should have pointed out, there's one filter down here that has a full rubber gasket all the way around it. You'll notice there. And then on the bottom, there is the other filter. Part of the reason for the large uh, surface area of these filters is to allow is to create less back pressure against the motor and allow for higher airflow. The motors will live longer that way when they don't have that kind of back pressure on them, but you can also get higher airflow. Interesting with the air belt series of SIBOs, every vacuum cleaner has an exhaust. Dirty air goes in, clean air goes out. That's fundamental to vacuum cleaners. Um, depending on the placement of the exhaust, the placement of the exhaust sometimes can be inconvenient. So a lot of canister vacuums, the exhaust is up here, it blows directly up. Um, that's probably one of the better configurations, but say you're on your curtains or, or whatever, potentially that exhaust blowing in a very direct line up can blow around dust in the house. Some canisters will exhaust directly out the back, and so what you find happening, particularly when you're vacuuming bare floor, is that dirt will blow around behind you. The air belt is very interesting. The reason they call it the air belt is the exhaust is in this cloth bumper all the way around the machine. So instead of directing a very tight stream of exhaust air, which could potentially blow dirt around, the exhaust is spread out all the way around the machine and essentially kind of poofs up the furniture guard here um, and creates almost like an airbag effect. So when you're bumping into stuff, it's gonna, it's gonna protect your furniture from scuffs and stuff like that. SIBO machines, uh, have adjustable power heads. They have one. They have uh, one through four different height adjustments. These will work on most carpet types, from commercial carpets. You can drop it all the way down to one. To um, most plush and frise carpets, you can run on setting three and four. These also work on high pile carpets and the newer, getting very popular soft carpets. There are optional base plates that you can put on this that will make them push easier for your soft carpets. And you can also swap out your brush roller for brush rollers, which may be more appropriate for different carpet types. That's probably something you're gonna to wanna to talk to your SIBO dealer about. Um, oddly, they're probably gonna be more informed on the subject of what types of brushes you're using on your carpet than your carpet store will. Um, I, I, would, I would go over that with them. You can turn the brush on these on and off. There's a step button here. You simply step on that and it will turn the brush on and off for a bare floor. Uh, and the SIBO D4 comes with a specific bare floor tool, which is strictly for bare floor. These are horsehair 
there's a couple reasons for that. Horsehair wears a lot better, but the other reason is that as horsehair wears down, the bristles don't get sharp on the end. They round out, so they stay soft and they don't uh, they don't scratch your floor as, as the bristles start to uh, the bristles start to wear down over time. Sibo has a five-year warranty on this product. They have a seven-year warranty on the motor and a five-year warranty on the machine overall. As of the recording of this video, we have never done warranty service on a SIBO product ever. We are a warranty center. We sell a lot of SIBOs. We've never had one fail within the five-year warranty period and need warranty repair. Someday, it's gonna happen and we'll have to stop saying that. But so far, so good, it hasn't happened. So that was the SIBO D4. I'm Josh from Vacuums R Us in Arvada, Colorado. This is a product we have available in our store. Um, you can also get it shipped if you'd like to buy it online. You can buy it from vacuumsrus.com. We have free shipping on any order over $100.